Now we've gone ahead and have already drawn a picture to represent the given information, but let's unpack this picture just a little bit. For instance, at a time of t1, four seconds, we have the particle's coordinates, five comma six, so we've labeled the x coordinate at this time t1 with five, and then the y coordinate with six. And then importantly, it says that the velocity is three meters per second, and the acceleration is in the positive x direction. Now, you might wonder, well, how do I know that the particle is located where I have shown it other than the coordinates? And the reason that we have the acceleration pointing to the right, of course, is because it's pointing in the positive x direction. But importantly, we are expected to know that with circular motion, the acceleration will point towards the center of the circle. So we already know that the center of the circle would be located where this little red dot is. So that's important. And then similarly, at a time of t2, which is at 10 seconds, we know that the acceleration is in the positive y direction. So it's pointing upward. And again, notice how we've drawn it. We have that acceleration pointing towards the center of the circle. So what this means is that the particle starts at t1 at that position, and then it travels all the way around in this sort of clockwise direction until it reaches t2. Now, you'll notice that that travel is three-fourths of a period. Remember, a period would be the time required to go all the way around the circle, but in this case, we're going to have the time to go three-quarters of the way around the circle. So what this means is that we can say that three-fourths of the period of this motion is going to equal how much time has elapsed. Well, t1 was four seconds and t2 was 10 seconds. So to figure out how much time has elapsed, then of course we can just subtract those two times from one another. So we now know that three fourths of the entire period of this particle's motion is equal to six seconds. So we can now easily solve for the period by multiplying both sides of our little equation here by the four thirds so that we cancel it out on the left hand side. So now we can see that the period is equal to eight seconds. So that's pretty exciting. And now we go back and examine the speed of this particle. And we were given some velocities when it was at T1, the velocity was three meters per second pointing along the positive, excuse me, pointing along the positive y-axis because it says j hat there. And then we know that at t2, the velocity was negative three meters per second, and it was pointing along the sort of x direction, in that case, the negative x direction. But the bottom line is the speed is three meters per second. Remember, speed is without direction. So we've actually indicated that already right here, that the speed was simply three meters per second. Well, why does this help us? Well, we know that the speed of an object in just general terms is equal to a distance divided by a time. We just said that the speed was three meters per second. Now the distance to go all the way around a circle would be the circumference. And that of course is equal to two pi times the radius of the circle. And then the time we've already figured out was the eight seconds to go all the way around the circular path. So we can now actually solve for the radius. If we sort of put this over one and then cross multiply this way, we would have two pi r, and then we would set that equal to a multiplication this way, and we're going to get 24 meters when we multiply that way. We now divide both sides of this by two pi, and this is great because this is going to give us the radius, which turns out to be approximately 3.82 meters. Now that we have the radius, we can go back to the picture. We know that the distance from the position marked T1 all the way to the center, so this distance right here, well, that would be the radius of the circle, which we just determined to be 3.82 meters. Now we're in business because the whole point of the question was to figure out the X, Y coordinates of the center. Now let's look carefully. We know the distance from the origin to this point is five meters. And then we just figured out from the radius that the distance from that five meters over to the center is the 3.82 meters, that distance. So of course, to get this x coordinate, we would simply add the five meters plus the 3.82 meters. That gives us an x coordinate of the center of 8.82 meters. So that is the correct answer for the x coordinate. And then for the y coordinate, well, that should be pretty easy because look back 
at where the particle was at time t1. That is in the same y coordinate as the center of the circle. And if we simply read over in our drawing onto the y axis, you can see that the y coordinate of the center is going to simply be 6 meters. So this would be the correct answer for the y coordinate. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it. But of course, please do not feel obligated to do so.